Greetings, my name is Neo Second. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 5. In the last episode, my worst fears came to pass, and uh, we've dealt with the fallout of Shion revealing herself to the police, and by extension, her connection to Satoshi. Because shortly after she arrived at uh, the police uh, precinct with Satoshi and Ushi, she was uh, pulled out and uh, brought into the main household of the Sonozaki family where she was rather brutally punished by her family for her trans transgressions. She ended up having, having to lose three fingernails at the end of it all. Not pleasant. And then after that, a few days later, we found out that uh, Satoshi has, inde has indeed vanished. But the theory, the theory that uh, Ushi came up with once uh, Ushi uh, managed to get Shion alone at one point and uh, tell her, um, you know, what happened to Satoshi, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Ushi and and uh, and now currently uh, Shion, since she since she seems to be uh, honestly considering the idea at this point currently, seems to think that it's possible that the Sonzaki family uh, basically took it upon themselves to get rid of Satoshi by essentially uh, forcing him out of town. And in exchange, they would look after Satoko in his place, thus uh, alleviating, alleviating him of the main worry that he had, so he, would, so he would feel less hesitant on getting out of there. The reason why I find I find this theory not, to not hold any water is because if why would th why if this was true, then why did the entirety of chapter three happen like it did? Because the whole conflict with chapter three was that uh, Satoko's uncle, her then legal guardian, before uh, he ended up uh, fleeing to his mistress's home for about a year. Uh, at the, at the current time in this part of the timeline during this year that we're currently playing. The, the only person that she had looking out, the only person that uh, she had looking out for her in regards to uh, being a legal guardian was, well, Rika and bikes, Rika and the mayor. But she was allowed to stay with the mayor. If the Sons, but yeah, if the Sonozakis actually wanted to uh, look after uh, look after Satoko in Satoshi's stead, why then? Would they allow the uncle to come back into her life and take her back under his wing, despite knowing full well what an abusive asshole he is, and how Satoshi, on, by, by extension, would very much be against the idea of Satoko uh, being back under the care of her abusive uncle? And then, of course, there's also the fact here that, based on what we know of Satoshi, he probably would have put up a much bigger fight than what we're being led to believe here in regards to uh, trying to stay there for for Satoko despite his own conflicting his own conflicting uh, inner turmoil over wanting to leave over wanting to leave on his own so he can uh, just run away from his own personal problems Either way something's not adding up here and, well, unfortunately for me, I have yet to really find any, any uh, new clues that could help me figure out what exactly happened to the poor guy beyond what I've, what I've already known since the question arcs. It's quite frustrating, just going without any kind of hint of any kind, but I know it's going to come eventually if I, keep, if I keep going along with this, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit continue. Okay, I guess we're not doing a time skip yet. If we're doing one at all. Yeah, it's been a while since I checked on the news, but the rumor of Satoshi's murder is true. Oh, they must have caught the deviant. It had been a few weeks since the murder. Satoshi-kun still hadn't been found. I had no new information on his whereabouts. Kasai's report came, as a result, completely out of the blue. So that the police were arrested? I heard that the police were arrested. I 
別件で取り調べを受けていた男が余罪として自供したんだとか The reason Ushi approached me is because he was convinced that Satoshi Kun did it. Go on, Shinwo. Satoshi Kun did a nai yo desu yo. Renzo Ku Kaishi Jiken wo moho shita ijo sha no hanko. Toyu yo na hanashi mi tai desu. Hai? Ijo sha? Nani sore? Kasai shrugged. Saa, wata. Nani shiro konkai no jiken wa. 秘匿捜査指定というものがかかっているんだそうですなのでほとんど情報が出回らないんです秘匿捜査何それ連続開始事件による村への風評被害対策ということらしいです誘拐事件なんかでも犯人との交渉が行われている間は新聞に載らなかったりするでしょああいう類のものらしいです Come to think of it, I hadn't seen anything about the ant's murder on TV or in the newspaper. Nani Shiro, Yonen Renzokude, Watanagashi no Hini, Jiken ga okotte iru wake desu kara ne. Oya Shiro sama no tatari da to sawai de omoshiro garu yakara mo oi so desu shi. So so, nan demo sono obagoroshi no ijo sha desu ga. Renzok kaishi jiken o moho shitakute okonatta to jikyo shitan da to ka. Wouldn't it be awfully convenient if,、uh, with this guy's arrest, those series of murder, murders stop? But alas, we know better. They don't stop. They just keep going. Unfortunately for the leaders of Hinamazawa. Kasai didn't know anything else, so instead of probing him further, I reviewed the information myself. I was really shocked to learn all this. I was convinced that Satoshi Kun killed her. I thought that was the reason he had to disappear. But it was actually some lunatic who killed her, and he had no relation to the ant whatsoever. So, Satoshi Kun had nothing to do with the murder? If so, why did he disappear? I couldn't accept that this lunatic had killed the ant. And what's really strange is the phrase Kasai used for four years in a row now. After all, I've been thinking that this murder happened because Satoshi kun had been in a dire situation and had nothing to do with, his, with the series of mysterious deaths. I felt as though Satoshi, Satoshi kun's case had become somebody else's. The series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa is also known as the Curse of Orishiro sama. Satoshi kun's case had become one of those mysterious deaths. In other words, Satoshi kun's case had become a part of Orishiro sama's curse. I didn't like the way that sounded. Because it was as though the curse had swallowed Satoshi kun. Something certainly did. ええ、残念ながら例の東京行きの新幹線に乗ったらしいという情報も確認が取れないままです正直なところ県の中にいるのか外にいるのかそれすらも分かっちゃいませんあれだけ胸を張ってサトシ君が犯人だと息巻いていたからもう行方をつかんでるとばかり思ってました<laughs> いやいや情けない限りです Ushi chuckled and poured a cup of coffee which looked far too hot しかし耳が早いなはい取得捜査指定だってのに
どこの誰が漏らしてるやらやれやれうちの傍聴も問題があるなウシスマークト Seemed he knew why I, why I was here today. まあ腐ってもその先の端くれですので多少の噂は耳にできますということで I smirked back at him It's all about bluffing まあいいか腹を割り合った仲ですしねいいですよおしゃべりしましょう Are you guys friends, though? Feels more like acquaintanceship to me. Mazu, k i k a s e t e k u d a s a i s h i n h a n n i t e i t a i n a n i m o n o d e s i j o s h a t o k a k i k i m a s h t a k e d o s o r e t e d o y u k o t o d e s k a Usually, when people say somebody is a lunatic, it means that they are kind of off kilter ups-、uh, upstairs. You know what I mean? <laughs> どういうことって言われたってね。I just answered it for you, old man. そりゃ私だって言いたいですよ。私はサトシ君が犯人の一点読みでしたからね。とんだ万馬券が飛び出したもんです。ウシ threw himself on the sofa and crossed his hands behind his head. He looked up at the ceiling and smiled wryly. 先日ですね。県警の方から急に連絡が来たんですよ。すでに逮捕して取り調べをしている男が主婦殺しを自供したって。それは何者薬に手を出したとんでもない野郎でしてね。出所しては捕まるの繰り返しだそうです。ひなみざ村連続開始事件が面白そうだったんで、4年目のたたりは自分が下してみたくなった。とかなんとか。If memory serves, this deviant never had, never actually lived in Hinamizawa or Okinomiya, yes? He, there, was never any, there was never any point that it was established he has any kind of history with either of these places. And yet, despite that, he suddenly develops such an. In, at one point, he, develops, he suddenly develops an interest in the mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa, which is, for all intents and purposes, a backwater village that is kind of. That's just small and insignificant in the grand scheme of the country. of the country that, And so much so that he actually decides to. Try to imitate them. I mean, it's not impossible for someone like this to happen. I'm not saying that, but given what I currently understand of current events and my own theories, vaguely defined as they are, about, about Satoshi's、uh, disappearance and this druggie's relationship to all this stuff, I can't help but wonder if it's possible. If he was just some guy that somebody brought in at some point and was pressured into、uh, confessing, to, confessing to wanting to, intim- to imitate these murders, I have no proof of this. I have no idea who exactly would want to do this or who would even have the power and authority to make something like this happen. But I'm just raising a possibility, you know? Because based on my, again, Based on my current understanding of things, this druggie, this lunatic, he's a really odd element in all of this. Very odd, in fact. It's, he's just, it's just too coincidental to me that someone like this would conveniently show up out of the blue. And confess to crimes that, co- that also coincidentally happen to relate to these murders here in this village that have been going on for the past few years already. Plus, the guy, got, the, the guy ends up dying a mysterious death in jail shortly after he was arrested, too. I don't know about you, but this smells like, this smells like a possible scape, uh, scapegoat frame, uh, frame up situation. 
Again, I have no proof, but it's just a feeling I have. Anyway, what are you saying? Unless you happen to be, have been a witness to um, the crime itself, in which case, well, you wouldn't have to be the real culprit then. But then I guess that would I would then have to explain, okay, who was who was there that who was there that witnessed uh, Satoshi commit his to commit his murder of his aunt. And um well wouldn't wouldn't the fact here that I would bring up such a person's existence also imply, given what I've already just said that maybe they might have some kind of connection to um, this guy's arrest and the statements he made, which would then in turn imply that maybe this witness might either be a powerful individual or they have some good connections and went out of their way to try to frame this guy, to frame some guy that they just found, they just thought would be a convenient scapegoat and or to uh, cover up Satoshi's murder. For some reason. I feel like I should probably just, uh... Put a, put a, put a lid somewhat on these, uh, wild, these wild theories of mine until I get more, uh, concrete evidence or information here to formulate something to help support them. Otherwise, I'm just literally just pulling ideas out of my butt and just... Well, hoping that somewhere later on the later down the road, I might get proven right. たとえ狂気が見つからなくても、おおむね確定。確定でしょうな。現場の状況と仏の状況を正確に供述しています。襲った本人にしかわからないような細かいあたりまでね。納得はいってないみたいですね。Hmm. Ushi, still looking up at the ceiling, went quiet. Yep, the spork. Wouldn't that essentially be the same thing as suicide, though, if it was caused by a quote-unquote mental disorder? I mean, either way, you're swallowing a damn spork, and you end up choking on it, you know? I imagine somebody swallowing that spoon and gagged. だから十分に納得するまで調べられたわけじゃありません。私は納得できないんですがね。上の方は十分に納得しちゃったようでした。どうもその愉快犯が主婦殺しの犯人ってことで決着しそうな流れです。Ushi turned his eyes from the ceiling to me. He looked serious. これは個人的な意見ですよ。他の誰にも内緒ということで。私はこの大馬鹿たりは何かの間違いだと思ってます。You and me both. I just wish I could pinpoint exactly why that's the case. 何かの偶然による壮大な勘違いか、もしくは。a frame. A frame. I mean, a frame up. Zenzen, I'm not sure. 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 I'm
。私は今でも犯人は北条聡志君だと思っています。きっぱり言い切りますね。残念ながら現場検証では犯人を特定できるような痕跡は何一つ発見できませんでした。サトシ君が失踪した後家宅捜索の許可がおりましてね家を改めさせてももらいましたがそれでも手がかりはゼロうん I don't know I don't think Satoshi would have been I don't think Satoshi is、uh, clever enough and knowledgeable enough to be so thorough to where he could eliminate any traces of forensic evidence or anything that could indicate he'd be at the crime So, this is very odd that they find absolute that they found absolutely nothing at the at the at the scene or in his house to indicate that he was there and that he was there when the crime was committed. Which further adds to my suspicion that maybe it's possible that there is some kind of cover up going on. So, the demo, Satoshi Kung, the Hanin, that the Utanga Tiru. ねえ証拠もないのにどうやったらそこまで人を殺人犯呼ばわりできるのやら大したもんです長年の勘ってやつですかええこの道で何十年も飯を食ってきた男の直感ですウシスマイルインサスファクションバイデンフィオリリーフトサトシ君はどこへサトシ君が失踪した理由の一つこそが彼が犯人であるからだと固く信じていたんですサトシ君が犯人でないならそのあたりがかなり薄れちゃいますからね Unless there well maybe if he wasn't the culprit there would be no reason for him to disappear as far as he's concerned but what about somebody else What if someone else had, to, had decided at some point that he needed to disappear for some reason of their, of their own? Could be the Soza, someone from the Sozaki families. It could be someone related to them. It could be someone completely unrelated. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is just, just, because, just because he's not the culprit, just. just Even if, he, even if he isn't the culprit, that doesn't necessarily mean that there wouldn't be a reason for him to vanish. Obagoroshi no Hanni was so no Yukai Hande, Satoshi Kun no Shiso to a Mukanke Satoshi Kun Shiso wa Watash to Satoshi Kun no Naka o Sakta Meni, Sonozaki Honke a Yatta Mono Obagoroshi to a Mukanke to you Kangai Katawa. Was Satoshi Kun a culprit or a victim? I'm personally of the opinion that he's both. The reason for his disappearance had become unclear. I was in the middle of the night, and I was in the middle of the night, and I was in the middle of the night, and I was in the middle of the night. So, well. In that case, that still begs the question then, why? If it's not, if it's, an, if, if the reason that someone would make Satoshi disappear is, isn't because of an quote unquote undesirable relationship, what other reasons could they have had for making him disappear? <laughs> Ushi laughed out loud while scratching his head. And after he stopped laughing, he leaned over. Yosh! Nara, s h o t do this, can eh? Kyote o m u s u b i m a s e n k a Shinsh Kyote. サトシ君失踪事件捜査情報共有協定裏の界隈でサトシ君の失踪に関する情報を得られたら私にも教えてくださいもちろん
私もサトシ君についての情報が入ったらあなたに提供しますいかがですなんだか一方的な虫のいい話に思えますけどウシチャコルシオンさんこのまま行くと主婦殺しの犯人はすでに死んでるその大バカタレってことで確定すると思いますそうなるとサトシ君の扱いは単なる家出人になりますつまり積極的な捜査は打ち切られるということです<笑>ですが私だけは続けます私だけはサトシ君の行方を引き続き探しますシオンさんも私もサトシ君の行方を探しているという点では一致してると思うんですがね目的が全然違いますがね私は単に無事を確認したいだけですが大石のおじさまにとっては逮捕が目的でしょうから<笑>主婦殺しが決着すればサトシ君は無実ってことになりますよ真実はどうかは別にしてもね怪しいもんです<笑>ブシチャクルディゲンブシチャクルディゲンブシチャクルまあ今後も仲良くやりましょう敵の敵は味方とも言いますしね別に私その先本家と敵対しているわけじゃありませんよ Even after they took、no. on, out your nails ならそりゃ失礼。かつ、I mean, if I were in your positions, I'd be feeling quite bitter towards your family. This is the way of Karada Ushi, huh? As Sis and Kasai said, I wouldn't want him as my enemy or my ally, because both would be too risky. Probably shouldn't let my guard down from this big fat weasel. I sipped on the coffee to fill up the silence, though I wasn't thirsty. Outside the window, I could see normal life taking its course. But Satoshi kun wasn't there. He should have been there, but he wasn't. I was scared that I might grow used to his absence someday. Where was he? Satoshi kun wa. d o s h t e r u n d a r o 無事だといいんですがねチェ生きてる可能性は薄いとか思っているくせに気休め言わないでほしいですサトシ君の失踪ひなみざわじゃ何て言われてるか知ってますディメニーのウェイアイガスえ鬼隠しにあったなんて言われてるんだとか To be demoned away means the same thing as being spirited away. It's part of the local dialect. もうささやかれてるんだとかおば殺しがお社様のたたりのせいだって言うんですか全体的に見てみれば仏も北条家の一人ダム戦争の戦犯と縁がないわけじゃないですからねしかもまたしても綿流しの日にとなれば面白がる連中が現れるのも無理もないことですバカバカしい。何がお社様のたったりだ。Though I said that, I couldn't quite wipe away the fear from my mind. Why did Satoshi kun disappear? Was it the Sonzaki family? Did he run away from the police? Did he really kill his aunt in the first place? Why did he even disappear? He's on his own. Well, Shirasama's curse has nothing to do with it. But. Hmm. 
That's strange. What's strange? Satoshi Kun and Orishira Sama's curse. Somebody once mentioned those two together before. I think you're right, but I can't quite remember who did. Hmm. When did I hear that? Ah, that's right. That rainy day. It was Reina Ryugu who told me that. Oh, right. It was Reina who told me that when we were t taking shelter in that shack. Uh. I remember the creepy story that she told me at, the, at that time. That's what Reina Ryugu said. Reina had definitely pointed out that Satoshi Kun wanted to leave Hinamizawa at that time. She also said, Satoshi Kun ga taiken shite iru koto wa subete oyashiro sama no tatari no maebure na no. She said that, for sure. She had definitely mentioned Orishira-sama's curse. A series of mysterious deaths has struck four times. Was Satoshi Kun being controlled by the curse? Is that why he killed his aunt and was demoned away? I have, well, again, I think it was being influenced by something. No way. That can't be true. Satoshi Kun's smile faded away in my mind. So Satoshi Kun disappeared. Not only that, the reason for his disappearance also disappeared. It must have been done by a human being. I can't accept that he was demoned away. Notebook, page 43. I moved from one chair to another because the air conditioning was too cold. I moved with my notebook, my pen case with a bunch of keychains, and my cup of milk tea. I did it all on, all on one go. I sat down in a new chair, then opened my notebook again. I scribbled my thoughts and sank into silence. A series of mysterious deaths. Dubbed the Curse of Orishirosama. I had been viewing each incident as a separate case, even though it was followed by another one. I had never looked at all the cases as part of one big scheme. After I wrote down all the incidents on paper, it became clear to me that all of them served the same agenda. I wrote down the victims. The first year, con the construction site manager. The second year, Satoshi Kun's disappearance. I mean, so parents, excuse me. The third year, the priest. The fourth year, Satoshi Kun's aunt. For the fourth year, one could consider Satoshi Kun himself to be the victim rather than his aunt. If I consider that each case arose from the grudge over the dam conflict, it's quite simple. In the first year, the construction manager was killed because he was a symbol of the dam construction itself. Of course, the real enemy was the Ministry of Construction, but it, but it wasn't as clear a target. That manager, on the other hand, had been aggressively shouting back at the villagers so he was a more appropriate enemy to attack. If Orishiro-sama had really cursed someone, it would have been the officials from the ministry. It's apparent that the target was selected based on the villagers' preference. The second year, the accidental death of Satoshi-kun's parents. It's said that they fell from a cliff in some park, 
but it's doubtful it was really an accident. His parents were labeled as traitors to the village because they sided with the dam construction, even though they were also from Hinamazawa. The Hojo family was ostracized during the dam conflict in order to prevent further pro-dam activists from rising up. That means that the Hojos were necessary during the conflict to play the role of the traitor. So, when the conflict was over, they no longer served any purpose. The construction site manager was a symbol of the external enemy. The Hojos were a symbol of the internal enemy. Those people fell victim to the curse and seemed that the grudge over the dam conflict had ended. Yet, those incidents were followed by another one. The third year. The leader of one of the three families, the priest Farood, suddenly died of an illness with an unknown cause. His wife drowned herself on the same night. She seemed to have left a note that said she was sacrificing herself to pacify Orishira-sama's anger. Whether it was a fatal disease or suicide, their deaths looked sus suspicious. Mion admitted that the Sonozaki family didn't like the priest's attitude. They didn't like how the priests had been generous toward the pro-dam activists. The priest wasn't quite a traitor but he was certainly uncooperative. Looking at these incidents, I realized that the curse was performed based on the degree of hostility. Enemy, traitor, and dissident. This meant that the curse was actually payment. It was a punishment for the criminals of war. In the fourth year, I didn't understand this case at first, to be honest. At first, I believed that this case was separate from the other ones, even though it occurred on the same day. I never thought that there would be any relation to the other three. But when I wrote it down and looked at it objectively, the victim is a relative of a traitor. After enemy traitor and dissident, relative of a traitor, doesn't seem too odd. It comes naturally as a fourth target. On the day the villagers worship Orishiro-sama, their guardian deity, the criminals of the damn conflict had been punished by the curse. Just like how I was forced to pay the Sonozaki house, the criminals were made to pay as well. After writing these things out, I started thinking that the fourth incident might be in line with a series of mysterious deaths after all. But what I'm but what I'm personally unsure about, Shion, is well You had all you had three of your fingernails removed. One for Kasai, one for that shopkeeper guy, and one for Satoshi. You sat, you had to, you had those have those nails removed so none of those three could be punished in your stead. If the Sonozakis had any semblance of honor to them, it doesn't make sense that they would choose to get rid of Satoshi anyway. But that only that only make that only, that's only if you're looking at this from well your relationship to him as you yourself have pointed out there's all there is also other there is also other aspects to um, Satoshi in particular that the Sonzakis could find troublesome Whether it was Satoshi-kun or the Dopehead, it seemed that they were forced to play the role of a murderer as a part of a bigger scenario. Even Satoshi-kun was the real culprit, 
even if he killed his aunt because of an ordinary grudge. The murder seems synchronized with the grand scheme of the series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa, which is a payment plan for the war criminals. That murder was the result of his pain. But what if somebody plans that as part of, the, of a scenario? For instance, somebody might have suggested to him to kill his aunt on that day, that night, at that place. I had no doubts that Satoshi couldn't decide to kill her in order to protect Satoko. But did he really reach that conclusion on his own? Satoshi-kun was optimistic and somewhat detached, as far as I know. Would he really have considered murdering his aunt even if it was to protect his sister? Couldn't it be possible for somebody to have chosen the aunt as the Forefear's murder beforehand? And they used Satoshi-kun. And Satoshi-kun was eliminated because of his connection with them? Looking at it that way, the murder of the first year resembles this case. The main culprit behind that case hasn't been found yet, dead or alive. The other culprits testified that their fight had turned into a slaughter. But wouldn't it be possible that the main culprit had manipulated the situation? What if he had been told to kill someone on that day, at that time, and in that place? I'm certain. The first murder resembles Satoshi-kun's case very much. So, did that mean Satoshi-kun was being controlled by someone by somebody else? The only thing I can somewhat agree with you on is that he's was certainly being influenced by something. What I'm not sure about, well, actually on second thought, I guess I do mostly, largely agree with you then. I thought I had something, I thought I had some other reason to at least partially disagree with you, but I guess I didn't. Uishi had presented me with a hypothesis that the Sonozaki family made Satoshi-kun disappear in order to end my relationship with a murderer. But when I read the notes I wrote down, his disappearance didn't seem too spontaneous. It seems like part of a bigger plan. Since I'd unexpectedly gotten involved in that plan, I had to be separated from him. Then Satoshi-kun was demoned away, as planned. At first, I also believed that the Sonozaki family made him disappear because they didn't like that I was in love with a member of a family of traitors. But something didn't add up. Something felt strange. I wasn't the reason for his disappearance after all. Even if I never met him in the first place. Satoshi-kun was supposed to kill his aunt in June 1982 and then disappear. If that's true, hmm. if this is true, and somebody was planning to get rid of, of uh, Satoshi anyway, like you're like you're speculating, let's say for the sake of argument, it's the Sonzakis. Why then have you endure a pun uh, endure a punishment on Satoshi's behalf if they're they were already playing on getting rid of him anyway? Again, if the Sonozakis have any shrem any shred of genuine honor to them, and I do think, as messed up as it is, they do, then th having them put you through that. Having you uh, gi give up one of your fingernails in order to essentially atone, essentially uh, be punished in Satoshi's place, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. 
At one point, I've been thinking of taking revenge on the hag. But, wait. I, I, I was just getting ahead of myself. But, what if it isn't the Sonazakis who made him disappear? Again, what if it's some other, other party? I believe that she separated us. What if my relationship with Satoshi Kun had nothing to do with his disappearance? What would that mean? Who made Satoshi Kun disappear? I need to understand the series of mysterious deaths in order to solve this mystery. What did all these deaths mean? Who was behind them? And what purpose did they serve? Well, if Rika's death at the end of it, at the end of all of this, is any indication, it, I guess you could say that maybe all these all these series of deaths is meant to be meant to be uh, seen as just someone using uh, Hinamizawa's well, yeah, using Hinamizawa's traditions against them. By making them by uh, making them believe that some sort of curse is uh, is um, carrying itself out against the perceived traitors of the village, only for then, to, at, only for then at the very, uh, only for then to suddenly out of the blue take the life of someone who wasn't seen as an enemy of the village, and in such a way. To, to where it was essentially it could essentially be right as a massive fuck you to Hinamizawa. Maybe if you take all these incidents together as part of the same grand part of the same grand scheme, then maybe all the other murders that take place before Rika's murder are meant to essentially take everybody in the village for a ride only to then subvert their expectations in the most horrible way possible. It'd be uh, a very sadistic thing to do, but given, uh, given the general tone, I guess, for lack of a better word, at, uh, at, of Rika's death, her manner of death, I don't think it'd be that far-fetched. Uh, I don't really think it'd be that far-fetched to assume that the person who uh, killed Rika in such a way might also have a bit of, sadi of a sadistic streak to them. I want to know the purpose, the motive, and who was responsible. Who took Satoshi Kun? I wanted to know if he was still alive. The series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa is also called Orishirasama's curse. What is that curse? Specifically, what kind of god is Orishirasama? What blessings does he bring, and what punishments does he dole out? I wrote down my thoughts in a notebook. What's Orishirasama? What is he? I scribbled these things down. I was so absorbed by it that I didn't realize somebody had been standing behind me, watching me the whole time. I couldn't stop myself from gasping when I realized that. Hello, Takano. Fancy running into you here. What are you doing here, if you don't mind my asking? Plotting something evil, maybe? <laughs> the intelligent looking woman giggled. She could have apologized a little better, too, since she'd been watching me from behind. Why are you approaching Xion? 
but she just stared at my face instead. And how would you know about Shion Sonozaki? As far as I'm aware, in the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things, you're just simply a nurse who happens to live in uh, Hinamazawa who just so so happens to be quite knowledgeable of the village's uh deep uh deep and bloody folklore and history. That and for some reason I you apparently wanted wanted uh poor Tomataki dead later on. Being twins is a pain sometimes. People you've never met before can tell exactly who you are. <laughs> okay, but that doesn't really answer my question. How do you even know about me and, and the fact that Mion has a twin to begin with? This information is not exactly public knowledge. Last I checked. The woman giggled again. I mean, for crying out loud, even the police didn't know. Well, you... Okay. She seemed to love her own hair because she kept running it through her, uh, running her fingers through it boastfully. Straight to first name basis, huh? Her condescending attitude bugged me. I hate mean people like that. I closed my notebook and got ready to leave the desk. あら、怒ってる。ご検察、痛み入ります。私は一人で考え事をするのが好きなんで、よそ行かせていただきます。失礼します。ごきげんよう。残念ね。私たち話が合うと思ったのに。So, let me get this straight. You show up out of the blue, approaching Xion for the express purpose of becoming friends with her? What are you really doing here? そうですか。私は会うとは思いかねますが。だって、お社様のたたりについて研究する同士に出会えたんですもの。Ah, so you were peeping at her at her notes then, huh? She saw my notes. My face reddened. これは私のそう妄想みたいなもの。出たらめです。子供の落書きなんかほっといてください。お社様のたたりと呼ばれる一連の連続開始事件。いずれの事件も個別に見えながら確実に一つの意思に基づいて行われている毎年一人がお社様のたたりに会って死に一人が池に絵に捧げられて失踪するははな何を急に言い出すんですか一人がたたりで死んで一人がなんですって I was taken aback by her weird spiel, but I realized right away that she said something extraordinary. Well, now that you mention it, you're right. The victims, the number of victims is always even. I was confused, but I tried to figure out what that meant. The damn construction site manager died in the first year. There was only one victim. 
In the second year, the victims were the parents of Satoshi-kun, so it was two people. You're forgetting that, uh, one of the, one of the culprits who, uh, murdered the damn foreman had disappeared and has yet to be fo found, dead or alive. So, technically, in the first year, there are two peep victims. In the third year, it was the priest. And if her death was also planned, his wife. Two again. And in this year, the fourth year, Satoshi-kun's aunt died, and Satoshi-kun went missing. If Satoshi-kun's disappearance was planned, the number of victims was two. It's true. Except for the first one, the victims always came in an even number. Two. Wait. I just concluded about myself that the first case resembled the fourth one. The main culprit was still missing. He might have been demoned away, just like Satoshi-kun. The only thing that makes sense is that you is that you've established that there's a clear pattern involved to all of this. Well, an even clearer pattern than what we already understood. Takano-san sounded like a teacher had shown me how to solve a difficult math problem. I wasn't quite convinced, but I couldn't deny what she'd said either. The fact that you're giving me hints pretty much tells me that you know a lot more about what's going uh, about this whole thing than what you're what you're currently telling me. Yes. So, how much do you know, Takano? <laughs> <laughs> she seemed content that I changed my attitude. She kept giggling for a while. She didn't seem that reliable. I didn't want to be acquainted for, with her for too long. But... I don't get to talk to people very much. And what she said interested me. I took the hand that Mio-san held out as a sign of reconciliation. Again, what's really standing out to me is that she's... is that Takano is moving very quickly to first-name basis. I'm no expert on Japanese honorifics... on, on Japanese honorifics and naming conventions, but I do know that, uh... Calling another person by their first by their first by their first given name rather than their last name or adding some kind of suffix at the end of it usually uh, is usually a sign that uh, you are quite close to the person in question. Like you could be either a really close friend or a lover even or something like that. So the reason this is standing out to me is because you two just met. And yet, you're trying to already establish that level of familiarity and closeness with her? Which, again, is making me suspicious. On top of everything else that you've just said, on top of everything else that I've already commented on. えっと、池にえとか言いましたかねえ、シオンちゃん。この話で盛り上がる前に、どうしてこの話に興味があるか聞かせてもらってもいいかしら。She leaned over and looked into my eyes. It was kind of uncomfortable. Miyo-san こそ、私のことをどこまでご存知です? 
ご存知ならおおよその見当はつくんじゃないかとさあ I don't believe you 何年か遠くの全寮制の学校にいて最近沖ノ宮に戻ってきたとしか知らないわよそうですかじゃあ想像つきますよね私がいない間に起こった連続開始事件私はよくわからないので調べてるんですちょっとした興味本位でなるほどね興味本位でね I got the impression that she knew about what happened to Satoshi kun and me. Because she instantly recognized me as she on, not me on. I, don't know why I, th I didn't know why I thought that way. As she shouldn't have access to the sources that, for instance, who she does. Exactly, which just again raises the question how does she know all this? And the only thing I can think of is she must have some sources of her own. Either that, or she is somehow direct, she is somehow intimately involved in, in whatever is going on here. Either way, that, that, that either one really seems, either one implies to me that she might not be working alone here. All I know for sure is that you are somehow deeply involved in this. Somehow. It was just the look in her eyes that made me think that way. Mio san ni mo kikimasu. Saki watashi no koto o oyashiro sama no tatari ni tsuite shiraberu doushi to iimashi ta ne. Naze tatari nan ka kenkyu shite ru n desu ka? So shite, lenzoku kaishi jiken no gisei sha wa 偶数人であることも言い切りましたね。ひなみざわ連続開始事件は、確かに通称で、親代様のたたりと呼ばれています。なぜたたりを研究すると、連続開始事件にまで踏み込むことになるのですかシオンちゃん、質問が一度に多すぎるわね。それに何が聞きたいのか、ややこしくてわかりにくいわ。I couldn't say anything in return. Maybe I've been too inquisitive. Junni kotaeru wa ne? Watashi ga kenkyu shite iru no wa tatari ja naku, motto kougi. Oni ga fuchimura no fuzoku shi yo? Hiratakun iyeba, kodai hinamizawa mura no shirare zaru rekishi, ankoku shi nitsuite kenkyu shite iru no. Oni ga fuchimura? Oni ga fuchi te... あの鬼の国につながってるっていう村の奥にある底なし沼のことですかあと知られざる歴史暗黒史って何です I kept asking questions. ミヨンさん、however, looked pleased to hear them. 鬼ヶ淵村というのは、ひなみざわ村の明治以前の名前よ。暗黒史というのは、うっ。人食い鬼の歴史はあ、ah, The Manning Demons, huh? Wait a minute. So, back in Chapter 2, when、uh, Takano was telling the story to both you and Keiichi when you went exploring that、uh, ritual storehouse during the festival, you already knew about this stuff? Takano already has basically told you this? And yet, you acted. Un uneasy about it all. Interesting. That was, a, that was a fairy tale told in Hinamazawa. Oh, wait a minute. No. You're only, we're only going to the basics. I was just. I, I don't know why I'm just jumping all over the place today. I'm just, I'll just, I'm just gonna shut up and let them talk. A long time ago, demons came out of the swamp, and while the villagers bowed with them, they ended up living peacefully together. 
The villagers transcended and became a sacred people, having demon blood in their veins. That long forgotten fairy tale came back to my mind vividly. ナミザワにえんのある人なら誰もが知ってる当たり前の昔話よねでは、その犯人犯鬼の仙人たちが時にえ何の話ですか村人たちの体に半分流れる鬼の血は鬼は鬼でも人食い鬼の血だったって話は
and you didn't want anyone to trace it back to you. Again, it's just strange to me. For someone who is for someone who proclaims herself to be an enthusiast about this aspect of Hinamazawa's history and is quite eager to share it with people, once uh, you once uh, the topic once the topic of discussion turns to that that you're very secretive about other people learn other other people besides who you talk to learning that the information came from you. You're you're stringing me along, aren't you? You're deliberately feeding this information for me for some purpose. It's your game. Oh yeah, she she took out a notebook. She appeared to be doing her research thoroughly. あ、ありがとうございます。お借りできるものなら後でゆっくり読んでみたいと思います。え、本当は閲覧現金の秘密ノートだけれどね。Mu-san handed me the notebook a bit hesitantly. It looked like he'd take a whole night to finish reading. It was densely packed with information. I saw copies of various documents and quotes in there, too. It wasn't just some delusion of hers. A person is sacrificed and disappears. Satoshi kun had gone missing. Did he become a sacrifice? What is a sacrifice anyway? Mio san looked pleased to hear my questions again. She took out another notebook and handed it to me. You've definitely come prepared. おやしろ そう。でね。親城様の祟りというのは放置してはいけないの。so you're accusing the Farood family of being the murderers for, for, for the past few years of the curse, then? それを生贄の義と呼ぶみたいなんだけどね。じゃあつまり毎年渡流しの日に親城様の祟りで一人死んで、その祟りを沈めるために、さらにもう一人を生贄にして殺してると、そう言うんですか？でも一人しか死んで
that person's body will never be found because he or she is supposedly thrown into the bottomless swamp. So, Tsunari. Inamizawa Mura Renzok Kaishi Jiken to you know, Futatsu de Seto ni Natta Mono. So, Ste, Soreo Maitos Kurikais Kotoniote, Damu Sen Soji no Kutekiwo, Maitos Futarizut Koroste Keru System no Koto Sashte Iruno. That is until the that is until the time period where the question arcs happen take place, in which case a person, one person, ends up dying who isn't by any by any stretch of, uh, by any stretch of the word a traitor to the village, more like an outsider, while you, well, what would you be classified as anyway? Either way, both you and Tomataki break this pattern each and every time. This seems to kind of fly in the face a bit based on this interpretation of this whole curse, this whole ritual, this ritual murder thing that you got going on here. At least somewhat. ちょっと信じがたいとは思う。だからこそ、あなたに預けた研究ノートをね、内容を理解できたなら、私の話がそういい加減なものでもないことがわかるはず。I heard a man's voice just then. A middle-aged man with a hat was waving at Mio-san from the entrance. ごめんなさい。町人が来たみたい。もっとゆっくり話がしたかったのに、残念。でも、機会はまだこれからもあるでしょうしね。そのノートはそれまで預けておくわね。中身をよく読んで理解できたなら、私のいい話し相手になってくれるのを楽しみにしているわね。Mio-san wrapped up the conversation and headed to where the man was waiting for her. She left her old notebooks in my hands. Mio-san waved at me as she left the library with her companion. I took a seat again and opened what she'd given me. What bugged me was the series of mysterious deaths, also known as the curse of Orishiro-sama. Maybe I'd get maybe I'd be able to get closer to the truth by reading no, these notebooks. If I studied them carefully, <clears throat> excuse me. I hope I don't. I hope I don't have hiccups. Okay, I think I'm in the clear. If I studied them carefully, I might be able to find out who was really behind the incidents. Why does Satoshi Kun have to disappear? What was he involved in? How did that happen? Maybe Takano's notes would bring me the answer. Research notes. Mio Takano. I started flipping the pages, this time making sure that no one was watching over my shoulder. It was time for the library to close. I had to leave. I bought some food on my way home. I shut my door and locked it right away. Then I heard the door of the neighboring, uh, neighboring apartment open. Kasai lived next door. Nobody else lived on this floor of the nearly empty apartment building anyway. I clearly heard the door open and close. Kasai must have noticed that I came home and was coming over because he wanted to talk to me. I unlocked the door and shouted out to him. Oh, hello. That voice. I twitched. 
どうぞおねえドアスローリーオープンドマイアルトエーゴーミオンソンザキーアピアードシューズホーディングボックスオブケーキウォスマイリングティミッドリー I brought you apology cake for your missing fingernails. Do you want to get to the end of the day? Do you want to get to the end of the day? Do you want to get to the end of the day? Do you want to get to the end of the day? Sis looked a bit tense when entering my room. It was her first time here. Sis, how are you? 新しい学校はやっぱりつまらないです一応通ってはいますけど気分が乗らない時はサボらせてもらってます全寮制だとなかなかそうはいかないですからね<笑>セールチはやっぱりつらかったかチェお姉も一度閉じ込められてみろってんです<笑>ごめんごめんケーキ買ってきたからさ食べよミオンオープンドボックス。I saw two cheesecakes there. We have the same taste in food, so we didn't have to fight if we get to the same thing. I chatted with her over the cheesecake. I talked to her about school and whatnot. 必要な家具とかがあったら言ってね。融通できるかもしれないから。この部屋にもようやく馴染んできたとこだけど近いうちに引き払うかもしれないから家具はノーサンキューですうちのお父さんが沖ノ宮に住むつもりなら戻ってこいってうるさいんですよお父さんに会いたくないんだけどかといって逆らうのも怖いしな<笑>お父さんもシオンがいなくなって寂しそうだったからなんだかんだ言っても帰ってきたら喜ぶと思うよチェッひとごとだと思って<笑> Come to think of it This is the first time I talked to Sis since I was allowed to live as she on some Zaki She didn't look like how she was at the son Zaki house that day The successor of the Sonozaki family and my twin sister are two different people. The demon lives inside the leader of the Sonozakis. Our bodies are, are exactly the same, except for the tattoo of a demon on her back. Mion's destiny as the successor was set in stone when she got that tattoo. It's pretty simple. The Mion from that night was different from the Mion before me. When I was forced to tear off my fingernails, I momentarily despised her. But if I were the next leader of the family, I'd have done the same. Sion, the hair is healed. I'm going to get rid of the hair. 最近は目立つのがかえって嫌なんで包帯みたいなのもしてないですでもまだだいぶいびつでねあまり人には見せられないかな I sneered at her displaying my incomplete fingernails ミオン grew quiet and looked down 謝らなくていいよミオンだってあそこは仕方なかったんだからさ次期当主の役割を演じただけ恨んじゃいないから。You sure? ごめんね。オッケー。その謝罪で私は全部チャラにした。でも、もう一度謝ったらそれは取り消し。一生許さないよ。え、何それ。お姉は一度謝りモードに入るとなかなか抜けられない悪い癖がありますからね。私の方で区切らないとキリがないんです。本当に許してくれるのサトシとのことも。My heart ached when she mentioned his name.It felt just like the ache of an old wound. 
シオンがサトシのことを好きなのはもちろん知ってたんだよあれだけ大勢の前で熱愛宣言しちゃいましたからねなんだか今さら恥ずかしくもなんともないや<笑>でもバッチャはあれで本当にけじめがついたと思ってるんだよ How convenient for, for シオンシオンがちゃんと自分でけじめをつけてみせたからそれで全部終わりってそうでなきゃ困りますあれだけ痛い思いしたんですからサトシどこに行ったんだろうねサトシは私が言ったのを。Who else could know other than you and your folks? Well, the culprit, of course. What did you say? Where did he go? I felt my eyeballs reddening in anger. It, I, it felt as though they were about to pop. I choked on a burning sensation in my throat. Huh? <gasps> Yon's expression rapidly changed. It looked like she noticed the devil's mask on my face. We were one and the same. We could understand each other's thoughts without voicing them. So showing our expressions was like unveiling everything in our hearts to the other. Uh. I told her not to apologize anymore. Mion apologized. I felt like strangling her. I was going to make her confess where he, she'd hid Satoshi Kun. If she told me she threw him into the Onigafuchi swamp, I'd strangle her to death right then and there! Satoshi no koto wa. Honto ni shiranai no. That's a lie. Words kept coming out of my mouth, like I was chanting a spell. I wasn't speaking by my own will anymore. I think you are. It was the demon who was controlling me. The demon that had been sleeping deep inside me woke up and was speaking through my mouth. My hands, I mean the demon's hands, grabbed me on by the neck. My hands slowly but surely squeezed Mion's neck. Mion put her hands onto mine. I looked at her fingers. Three of the fingernails on her left hand looked as ugly as mine. What? Why are your nails why are your nails like her Shion's? Tears rolled down her cheeks. She didn't have to answer. She had the same scars as I did. She atoned as well. The way those wounds were healing looked the same as mine. So, did she get the, the, these wounds around the same time as I did? It had to have been after you got your nails removed and you lost consciousness. 
because we didn't we didn't see anything from her to indicate that she already gone through that nail removal thing before you did. Shion da ke ga tsume o hagasareru nante kawaisou sugiru nda mo. My heart it weeps. Neon starts sobbing. I stood there, petrified, still wringing Neon's neck. Shio ga ne, Satoshi no koto o suki da te wakatte. Atashi, Shio to Satoshi ni shiawase ni natte hoshikatta nda yo. Datte, Shio bakkari, itsu mo kawai sou de. Atashi tachi wa onaji futago na no ni. なんでシオンばっかりいつも差別されて<笑> It didn't come as a surprise to me that Mion might also have loved Satoshi Kun as I did We've always liked the same stuff even the same people She was stupid enough to feel obligated Someone like me. I didn't want to see her again. もうね二人は普通に過ごしてもよかったんだよなのになのにサトシいなくなっちゃったこんなのひどいよね<笑>ミオンは n smart enough to shed crocodile tears Those tears were real. Her tears dissolved my demon's anger, like how the sun melts ice. Shinjite! Shio! Hontou ni Satoshi ga dou shite inaku natte shimatta no ka? Wakara nai no? Sono zakike to ka batcha to ka? Hontou ni sou yu no wa nani mo kakawatte nai no? Batcha wa... シオンのけじめですべてを許しただからサトシに何かするなんて絶対にないのミオごめん苦しかった I took my hands off her neck and held her instead <笑>苦しくなんかないよシオンはもっともっと苦しかったんだよね<笑> I shouted at the demon in my mind. I believed in Mion. I had been convinced it was the Sonzaki family that made Satoshi Kun disappear. But Mion denied it while shedding tears. Between her and me, Her tears are more convincing than any words. So, I'd believe in her. It absolutely wasn't the Sonozaki family that made him disappear. Then it has to be somebody who isn't, who isn't tied to them that did it. So who is it? So... Do you really think that Satoshi Kun disappeared because of Urashiro Sama's curse? I don't believe in curses! And Mion didn't do it! If it wasn't the curse or the Sonozaki family, who demoned him away? I don't know! I just know it's not Mion! It's not the Sonozaki family because Mion says so! That stupid Shion. 
Are you going to ignore Satoshi Kun's voice? I know, I know! You don't have to remind me, demon. I can hear his voice! I know he's mumbling with an amb ambivalent expression, like he always used to do. Even though he knows help won't come. I'll help him no matter what. I'll save him if he's alive. I'll avenge him if he's dead. But Mion didn't do it. You just want you just want to take it out on somebody. It doesn't matter who. But I'm Shion, not a demon. You're only a part of me. Don't try to take control. Fuck off. Don't ever show up again. The demon faded away. My body went limp, and I fell to the floor while holding me on. Because your conception just basically did a funny while in your mother's womb and divided in two. どうしてやめなよ。私たちは私たち。公平な関係でいたいのに。仕方がないよ。ミオンの背中 Mion is a demon, and Xion is a human. Even though we're twins, there's a difference between us. Was it impossible for humans to live with demons after all? It should be possible. Because they did it before. That's the legend of Hinamizawa. Humans and demons lived in harmony together. Zuri Shirasama watched over them. Neon. Shion. Satoshi kun. Demons. Humans. Ori Shirasama's curse. The series of mysterious deaths. Satoshi kun's disappearance. We fell asleep while holding each other. While holding everything. New tips unlocked, page fifty, sixty four, and eighty five. I still think it's possible that Mion is telling the truth, as far as she's aware. But alas, she is not the official head of the Sonozaki family yet. Uryu still is. So, it is possible that because she isn't, she hasn't been named the true successor yet, that she's still a successor in training, essentially that she isn't in the know of everything that goes on in the family. Even the big stuff. Or you would be in a position to know all that. But if she did have a hand in Satoshi's disappearance, what reason would she have to tell Mion about it?
I can't dismiss the possibility that the son, that some but that's the Sonzakis in some capacity might be involved with what happened here. But I also keep thinking it's also possible that someone that isn't related to them is involved. I mean, for crying out loud, we have Takano. We have Takano here who just keeps showing up out of the blue and just keeps raising more and more questions from me. Revealing to me that she has knowledge of things that she shouldn't know and yet does. All I know for sure is that there seems to be some third party involved here. And Takano might be related to it somehow. It's funny. This is supposed to be an answer arc, and yet I'm being presented with the usual amount of questions that the questions arcs, arcs have given me. Anyway, let's get through these tips. I saw Mio Takano a few times after that. At her core, she was fascinated with the bizarre, and she had an insatiable curiosity that was just as strong. I have to remind myself not to take her story too seriously. Otherwise... I might start believing that Satoshi-kun disappeared because of the curse. She talks about the dark history of Hinamizawa a lot. It's all very interesting. Her theories are based on nothing but conjecture, but some of her intuition covers facts that only members of the Sanazaki family would know. She thinks that Orishiro-sama's curse is the continuation of these ancient rituals. In other words, she believes that the curse is performed by religious fanatics. According to her theory, a religious cult once existed in Hinamizawa, and the three families stemmed from it. She believes that they are operating behind the scenes in order to revive the dignity of the Onikofuchi people, which was lost during the Meiji era. Miyosan's theories are far are far reaching. And looking at them on a larger scale, they end up making a lot of sense. But they can't offer any explanation for Satoshi Kun's disappearance when using them on a smaller one. <coughs> Excuse me. Her theories are just too broad. Sixty-four. I exchanged information with Uushi every now and then. We'd each expect new leads from each other, but neither of us had any luck. I no longer believed the tip that Satoshi-kun might have had to Tokyo. It was clearly bogus anyway. Although I can't befriend Uushi, he's been fair about the deal. He alone has been serious about uncovering any new information. Uushi's sources are quite reliable, so whenever I found some dubious tip, I check with him to see if it was valid. My meetings with him have diminished in frequency, since he's been assigned to new cases. Eventually, we stopped meeting entirely. Uushi stopped investigating, and I reached the limits of my sources of information. People now think that Satoshi-kun's disappearance was a supernatural phenomenon called demoning away. In Hinamizawa, they referred to his disappearance as him having transferred, and nobody will talk about it otherwise. Definitely explains then why you took serious issue with Keiichi talking about his transfer. I don't like the way that phrase is used to erase him. And now, 85. 
during the upheaval surrounding Orishirasama's curse in 1982. I was pulled this way and that by new leads on Satoshi Kun's disappearance. Every time I found information that looked promising, I kept changing my theories. But that also became an incredible burden on me. It wore me down plenty on its own. The fatigue was harsh, but it also provided a very kind acceptance. Bit by bit, it soothed away the anger, sadness, and doubt that wore me down. I'll never forget Satoshi-kun. I'll never for try to forget him and move on. I constantly repeated those to myself in my head. I repeated them to keep my memories of Satoshi-kun from fading too. Over and over. For the sake of my fun memories of Satoshi-kun. Together with my fear and my sadness, I repeated them forever and ever. You really are fixated on this boy. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of concerning me. I feel like I was really all over the place today with my spec with my speculations, and honestly, I don't think I really made a whole lot of sense with some with some of my ramblings either. Even like it didn't make sense even to me. Maybe I'm just tired. I don't know. I mean, I'm certainly I'm certainly very invested in what's going on, but. Damned if I didn't confuse myself once or twice. My apologies if I ended up confusing some of you too. It's not my intention. My head just works that way sometimes. Whenever I'm trying to uh, th make theories. Sometimes I just go all over the damn place. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut things off here. I guess we're going to see whatever is going to happen next time in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 5. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.